Let's take a look at when we're working in InDesign and we're designing a card, how do we add images and text? I come to my workspace and I see that I have my pages. I want to make sure that I am going to be on page one. So for instance, if I'm clicked on page four, I can come to the bottom left and I see I'm on page four. I want to make sure that I am on page one. This is my cover page. I have downloaded a photograph from unsplash.com, which is a really great place where photographers put up their photographs that are high res and you can use them and give them credit. Uh, so what I want to do, I'm on page one and I'm going to come to my toolbar. Again, if you don't see your toolbar, just come on up to window and make sure that tools is turned on. I'm going to choose my rectangle frame tool. I can see I have an ellipse and a polygon, but I'm going to stick with a rectangle and I'm going to draw a box that is the size of my page. It's a little bit bigger. That's fine. Now I'm going to come on up to file place and I'm going to place my photograph inside of the card. I've made a uh, folder which is named card and I'm going to find that folder that I want. I have this image of a dog that says party animal uh, and I place it in. Now I can see that this image is really large and inside of InDesign everything is linked. So I'm placing in the entire large image. Now I'm going to work with the fitting. I come to object and I can choose fitting and I have these different options. I can say fill frame proportionally. Let's go for that. See what that looks like. And there we have it. I have my image all placed in. Excellent. Great. Now I can come in and I can also see that I have my layers and I'm going to add happy birthday across this image. What I want to do here is I'm going to actually lock this image and I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to put my type on its own layer. The reason why I'm doing that, it's really easy sometimes for the, the images, the type and a, a photo or a type and a box to get intertwined. So I find creating it, dividing it out in layers keeps my workspace better organized. I come to my type tool. What I'm going to do first though, is I'm going to actually take a block and add a shape of color. I'm going to grab my shape tool, my rectangle tool, and I am going to add it across the bottom. Excellent. I am going to choose a color and I'm going to grab my eyedropper and pull some colors from this image. Now my problem is, is that I've locked the image. I'm going to unlock the image. I can see it already did pull some of these colors. I like those. I'm going to add those in and I can see I have this purple that I pulled. I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to lock this layer up again, come back in to my type, which actually is a shape. And I am going to drop this color on in. There we have it. Now I can come on back over to my tool thing here and I am going to turn off the stroke. I can see I can come on up here too and I could change the way the stroke is or I could just turn it off. Click right onto here and turn it to none. Excellent. Now I can take this shape right here as well and if I wanted to I could also lower the opacity of it. That way I can see some of the image coming through. I'm going to pull this on up a little bit higher and I'm going to write in happy birthday up in here. Excellent. I'm going to lock this layer real quick too and I'm actually going to change the name of this layer to my shape. Then I'm going to add my type. Now I'm going to add another layer and have in add in my type. Now we take a closer look at these layers too. We can see that it's green. And what that means is when I'm working, the boxes around it will be green. I can unlock and get everything working better. I have my type tool and I'm going to begin by drawing a text box. I'm going to type happy birthday. You can spend quite a bit of time now thinking about what color you want your font to be and what font you want to choose. I am going to go for a font. I can come to type. I'm going to go for blunny black. And again, I definitely want to change the size up. 
I'm going to start moving the point size over. I want it to fill up this box as big as it can be. I'm going to bring this on down a little bit and I can re change the size of the box that it's in. I'm going to change the color of my font and I'm going to double click on in. I'm going to actually make it white, see what that looks like and hit OK. Click on off and I have happy birthday. Now for sure, what I probably would want to do if I'm going to keep it white is make the box 100% opaque and maybe even a little bit darker. So let me lock that up, unlock my shape, click onto my shape, and I'm going to put my opacity up to 100%. And I'm going to actually double click on into this color in here and maybe just work with it a little bit more to change it up so there's a little bit more contrast. Lots of different options here. I can even work with the slider, seeing what we have, working with the distribution, still in the same kind of family. Again, you can spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out what color and how you want it to be oriented and moved around. You might also be feeling like, huh, I can't really get a sense of how this looks. If you come to view, go to overprint preview, and then you'll get a better sense of what your card looks like. I definitely want to work a little bit more with um, how it is moving around. So I'm going to actually unclick this and I want to center this just a little bit more. I can also click on both of these two boxes and choose to start distributing and centering my different objects. Now I want to come on into my card and on page three, I'm going to write happy birthday party animal. So I have my cover page, my second page of my spread. That's when I open the card. This is usually blank. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to again, grab my T for type. This time I'm going to go with just more of a plain font. My decorative fun font is for the cover. And now I'm going to type happy birthday party animal. I can click on in. Again, I'm going to change the size of the box. Now, whenever I see this little red point here, the text is um, running through. It's the box is not big enough. I see I have this line that I'm in the center. I'm going to come on down a little bit more. I'm going to leave this right here. Happy birthday party animal. And again, I could spend a little bit more time, maybe make this font just a little bit bigger, go to 14, and maybe I'm going to change it up. I'll go for Arial Black. Let's see what that looks like. Now I can see as I do that, that again, this didn't fit, and this is probably a little bit too dark. I'm going to choose it one more time. Lots of choices, and you can spend quite a bit of time choosing what font you want to work with. I always love typewriter font. Maybe I'll leave it as that for now. Happy birthday party animal. Wonderful. If I came to page four, maybe I'd put a little something about the card, or I could also just add a color to the back as well. If I was to do that, again, I would grab my shape tool, click on down. Come on in and dump a color. So there we have it. We have successfully laid out our card. We have our first page, our inside spread, and we have the back of our card.